That's my next thing. Deb, a girl came into the doctor's office with little sleeves on her. She's doing a surgery with this. You can work out. Work out. I could tell. I was tell. It's not about being skinny, it's about being fit, right? Am I right, friend of that? I don't want to look skinny, I want to look like I can kick your ass. That's what I want to look like. Okay. It's a good thing I didn't have a third glass of wine. Shit would really get real. Damn. Woo! Oh my god. The overhead lighting is a killer. Welcome to the Strong Island Radio Showcase, Comedy Showcase. We are here tonight with our master of ceremonies, Rob Sibadonis, otherwise known as the Silver Fox. Coming out, baby. Okay, okay. We found our first kink. All right. Yeah. Sorry. That's Lori okay. Can't drink. That's okay. Lori can't drink wine before Thanks the show. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Let me hear some more. I need some more. I need some love. Oh. Right, there's so many people in the audience that I know. This is weird. It's like playing in my fucking friend's beat. So, glad you guys came out. Yeah, you got to turn the volume down. I love when people don't know how to use phones. It's funny. You're going to hear myself 10 seconds ago all night now. Glad you guys came. We're at Paradise Studios here in Massapequa, Strong Island Radio. We have a Strong Island Comedy Showcase here for you tonight. This is our first night getting this show up on its feet. Um, I have some great stand-up guests to come out tonight and do their thing for you. That's what we're all about here. Um, I want to uh, formally introduce our executive producer and good friend of mine. You can grab the mic and come over here. Lori Fay. Give it up for Lori Fay. Yeah, she's so... She's, she disconnected the mics to be here in a minute. That's okay. First night is supposed to be this way. I found the second kink. I found the second kink. Speak into the mic. I found the second kink. More, more. I, I found the second kink. Okay, there you go. Good. So uh, thanks, Lori, for putting this together. Um, she said, Rob, I want to do a comedy show. I said, yes. That was it. She didn't have to fucking finish. So what we're doing here is we're going to try a, uh, for a few weeks, um, we're going to try a test run. And how are you feeling about it? I just want to say this. Bringing it back to Luke, uh, 2343. <laughs> I think that everything happens for a reason. At the end of the day, a little lower, Rob. At the end of the day, um, I think that everything happens for a reason. I wonder who had their lips on this mic before me. I'm kind of grossed out right now. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy to be doing this with you. And um, I knew at one point or another we would be on stage together. It's, it looks like we're supposed to go, babe. I got uh, you, yeah, babe. Yeah, no, I, I feel, feel it. Better. I feel it coming. I need. If I was short and was I a need, dangerous I skier. Need, and I want to say something right now. I think we look good together, don't you? I think so, too. I think if your husband's watching, no, I don't think we look good together Hey, babe, you're my other right. babe. But you know what? This is all good fun, and I'm excited because we got good talent here tonight. Good. I Lori is a very honest person. She's very upfront. She just says what's on her mind. Um, there's a show on earlier on Wednesday nights, um, The Living Room. If you get a chance, watch it. It's a, it's a fun show. Uh, Lori and Christine are on there. They give a lot of good advice. They have good topics. Uh, I'm doing a segment on there, No Cold. We need to talk. I do that. Uh, once in a while, we'll be doing that. And um, so when we first got here tonight, most people say, hi, how was your day? Lori said, hey, do I have camel toe? <laughs> True. I'm not going to lie. So the rest of the night, I, had it, I was just distracted. I was like, yes. Or, no, I said, no. I said, no, no, you don't. You, know. you could, but no, you don't. You know. So Listen, I appreciate Listen, you know that. what? That's what I love about our relationship. We can be real. We can. We can. And there's no sex. It's like being married. Um, <laughs> that's what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't suck. So I had a root canal today. Honestly, I had a root canal today. And here's the filling. Um, and the dentist office I go to turned corporate recently over the past year. And uh, I don't know if anybody's had this happen. It becomes like a revolving door kind of like. So I had a new dentist today. Like, oh, fuck, this guy's going to be in my mouth ripping nerves out and shit. I never met him before. He won me over like that. He numbed me, I swear to God. He put his hand on my shoulder, he leaned in with the drill, and he said, is it safe? <laughs> I looked at him, I said, I'm going to fucking like you. And he laughed, and then when he started drilling, he said, I'm serious, tell me, is it safe? <laughs> so I love this guy. Um, and my jaw is killing me. I said, for like 35, I don't know how hookers do it. I don't know how, how do you, how do you speak, Captain? <laughs> I don't get it, no lube, nothing. It was just teeth coming out of there. 
Um, so I'm really impressed that we got the amount of people we got in here. Uh, this, you can't really see at home. There's room for 2,000 people, and we brought in like 12. So we're. <laughs> it's the wait, beginning. Wait, you wait. build. You build in comedy, and then you see what happens. Um, we had a rally. Uh, very nice studios. If, if you're interested in doing anything, Paradise Studios is the place to come. I would say. Um, we don't really have any couples. We have no couples here tonight, right? No couples. What happened to what happened? Sleeping. He's sleeping. All right. Hey, Sean. What the fuck? <laughs> He'll know who he is. But uh, the couple, you know, people here are pretty much my age, so it's like you know, it's different when you're a couple at our age. You know, when you're young, you look at each other's eyes like oh, I love, love looking in your eyes. I just I love looking at your smile. Just when you look up at me when I'm talking to you, it's beautiful. Then when you get to be our age, it's like, nah, that's a skin tag. <laughs> you might want to get it looked at, but I'm pretty sure it's a skin tag. You don't wanna... <laughs> Things change. You know, uh, I just uh, dropped about 70 pounds. Oh, 70 pounds less than you have. Oh, I'm back on the cocaine. So there you go. I had bariatric surgery, and um, you know you've had enough when you said, you know what, the stomach, <laughs> let's fucking get rid of it. Let's just do that today. It's nothing but trouble for me. Um, but wow, am I feeling good. Holy shit. Anybody in here ever lose a lot of weight? You fucking liars. You guys are up and down like everybody else. It's a great feeling. You walk around with a pep in your step. It's like, yeah. Sex is like, oh, yeah, okay. I remember what this shit's like. I remember this. It's like in my mind, I'm back in my 20s, you know. Up here. <laughs> the rest of me's still fucking 55, though. I'm saying shit in bed, I'm pretty sure I wasn't saying when I was in my 20s. Ow, my neck. Oh, shit, baby. Ow, 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 ow. Uh, grab a pillow. <laughs> Under the elbow. Shit, easy, easy. All right, let's see. Maybe if we, uh, you know what, fucking just turn on the television. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to keep the show moving along? Yeah. A lot of noise. I got three great acts for you today. I'm going to bring up the first of those three special guests for you right now on this guy plays clubs all over Long Island. Very, very funny guy. Very up, very smiley. Puppies and daffodils kind of guy. <laughs> Make some noise for Steven Rocco Perillo. It's here for him. to be here. Um, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but um, a lot of people ask me for a lighter. <laughs> I'd like to open up with a quick impression. Uh, this is my impression of a narcissistic Alzheimer's patient. Narcissistic Alzheimer's patient. Do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> Get it? Because they forget who they are. So they, okay. Um, that joke is inspired by a relative of mine. I have a great aunt who got diagnosed a couple of months back. She came to see me perform, and I told that joke in front of her. She was very upset with me, but she got over it. Because she, it's like it didn't even happen. <laughs> Um, Rob was talking about weight loss. I, too, lost a lot of weight. I'm down 80 pounds. Thank you. I was really proud of this. I posted this on Facebook. I got a lot of good comments. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, you look great. Then I got a comment from a girl I have a little thing for. And she's like, oh, keep it up. I'm like, really? I thought I was done. I... I guess that means I haven't hit your fuckable threshold yet. <laughs> it's not nice at all. So let's talk about uh, who's in town, right? Dun, 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 dun. Donald Trump's in town, huh? You guys don't like Trump, I can tell. I can smell it on you. Yeah. Listen, I, li I, 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 I like that people question his patriotism. But listen, you got to love a president whose hair literally is amber waves of grain. <laughs> they say he suffers from xenophobia. You hear this term, xenophobic. 
the irrational fear of people from other countries. <laughs> Listen, I can relate. I have something very similar to this. It's called xenophobia, the fear of warrior princesses. <laughs> he did this whole big thing recently about MS-13. You know, MS-13, uh, are we afraid of MS-13 here? You're a little worried? I'm not worried. MS-13. 13 guys with multiple sclerosis? Doesn't sound that scary. <laughs> he does make a good point, though. Does make a good point. I feel if you live in this country... I, it's not that funny. It's so funny. I feel if you live in this country, you should be a documented resident who's paying taxes and social security. Can we at least agree on that, yeah? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, thank you. Yeah, just, I say fuck the Amish. <laughs> yeah, they've been exploiting the system for too long, if you ask me. That wall is going around Pennsylvania. That's what I say. Aren't they weird, the Amish? They're like pilgrims that never got the hint. <laughs> They're weird. Let's talk about weight loss again. Um, I go to a gym. Any gym people here? Cool, gym people. Um, I was 250 pounds when I joined the gym. Now down to 170. Um, thank you. Um, you know you're out of shape when you join a gym and then the next day the bank calls you because they thought someone stole your credit card? <laughs> That meant that someone at the bank was going through my credit history. It was like Taco Bell, yeah, Burger King, yeah, there's a protein shake at LA Fitness. That's a red flag. <laughs> I got a personal trainer at the gym. I don't know if anyone here has done that. Personal trainer's job is to scare you into thinking healthy. One day my guy came in with a five pound replica of body fat. Have you ever seen these things? These giant yellow blobs, it's like what body fat looks like. He puts it right on the table. Take a good look at that, Steve. That's inside you right now, slowly killing you, wrapping around your intestines. Me, 250 pounds, all I'm thinking is, wow, that looks delicious. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> but a lot of people ask me, why did I want to lose the weight? And I'll tell you why. It's because when I was young, I lost a lot of members of my family due to heart problems and diabetes and stuff like that. So now that I'm 30 years old, I want to nip it in the butt now. Growing up because of this, I didn't have a lot of things like, like toys and presents, like the holidays were depressing. I was jealous of all the other kids in school because they had baseball cards, Pokemon cards. Anyone here collect some sort of card growing up? Anybody? No? No baseball. one? You collected baseball? See, I didn't have those things growing up. So you know what cards I collected? Those little plastic cards that they give out the funeral Aww. homes? <laughs> Yeah, I show up the next day at school. No one wants to trade with me. I don't, under, I don't understand it. I'm like, come on, what do you want for that Derek Jeter rookie card? I'll give you a uh, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe that they actually spelled my father's name wrong on his card? How messed up is that? I mean, they fixed it, so this one's limited edition. <laughs> Oh, I got them all. Got my dad, my grandparents, my aunt and uncle. I got a full house, ladies and gentlemen. Full house. Read them and weep. Do you get it? Read them and weep? Because you read the little prayer and then you cry. Okay. Um, they don't let me perform at nursing homes anymore. This is actually a true story. Last time I performed at a nursing home, I started doing magic tricks. I'm like, is this your card? Oh! Padre Pia, coming in handy. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about sympathy cards for a minute. Why not? We're going there. You ever receive a sympathy card? They're like awkward in my opinion. I once received a sympathy card with scratch offs in it. Yeah. It was even more awkward because they were win for lives. Oh, he would have loved that. <laughs> Like, I'm so sorry. Um, let's switch to a lighter path. Roadside memorials. You don't like me. <laughs> Listen, it's okay. I can, I can take it. You make me sick. Nah, it's, you know what I'm talking about? The roadside memorial, the cross on the highway with the flowers. You ever notice that there are always crosses like Jews don't get in the car accidents? Right? You never see one with a Star of David or a Buddha, like, waving by traffic? It just bugs me that we got to put a memorial everywhere someone dies. Look, this is a true story. My father died of a heart attack working out at Gold's Gym. True story. I don't show up there with a teddy bear and strap it to the fucking elliptical, okay? <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. I appreciate it. 
I took the Southern State to get here, the Southern State Parkway. You familiar with it? Lots of roadside memorials on the Southern State Parkway. Out in Suffolk County, where I'm from, there used to be an exit where there was like 10 roadside memorials all lined up next to each other. And every time I drove by this, all I was thinking is, you know what? Either this highway is dangerous or these things are very distracting. <laughs> People just drive by it all. Oh, see, now that's sad. Whoop. Let's actually switch uh, topics. Um, where are my dog people at? You guys like dogs? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, my dog died, and uh, <laughs> I'm only I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. I I, I love dogs. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. <laughs> um, I have a, I am a proud pit bull owner, and I um I believe that there is no such thing as a bad dog. It's a bad owner. Can we agree on that, guys? Yes. Thank you. See, my dog is exactly like me. <laughs> it smokes a lot of pot and eats Doritos. All right. Yeah. My ex-girlfriend used to make fun of how lazy my dog is by comparing him to me. It's like, Steve, your dog's so lazy. He's just like you. <laughs> Takes after his owner. Oh, yeah? Remember last week when my dog humped your sister's leg? What a coincidence. <laughs> I've been cutting down the pot, actually. Um, I don't really smoke pot anymore, and I'm sober off alcohol for um, two months. Two months, no drinking. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know you have a uh, you know you have a drinking problem when your town's DOI checkpoint is your driveway. Ooh, yeah. Where are you guys from? You guys from Nassau County? Seaford. Seaford. Okay, cool. You ever see these signs? These DUI penalty signs on some of the highways. It's a sign that has all the consequences of what's going to happen to you when you get caught drinking and driving. These signs got me to stop because I drove into one. <laughs> all right, well, before I get out of here, I got to say this has been uh, a lot of fun. It's, it's, this is so much better than what I used to do. I, I used to be a school photographer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to work for the company Life Touch. You ever hear of them, oh, Life Touch? Yes. Yeah. Is it just, yeah, ripoff, yeah. And not only is it a ripoff, it's the most inappropriate name for a company that photographs children when you think about it, you know. I got hit on by a teacher one time. A teacher asked me if I would be interested in doing a private lingerie shoot. I'm like, this is highly inappropriate, Mr. Murphy. Yeah. I One time I had to photograph these two brothers, identical twins in every way, except one of them was noticeably heavier than the other one. You guys, anyone here know twins? No. You know yeah. twins? Are they, are they identical or fraternal yes, bullshit? They're fraternal. they're fraternal. So, but like, you have you've seen twins though before? Like, oh, identical. Like, sure. It's like, in my, they're because they're identical. But in my, he, one of them was fat. I'm like, that must suck being a fat twin. Because at that point, you can't even like blame your genetics. <laughs> His brother has the same metabolism. I mean, on the plus side though, for Halloween, they could just go as the before and after picture. Think about that. It was my job to get smiles from children. It was weird, but I tried, man. All right, nice big smiles from mommy and daddy, right? I said this at a school one time, and the little kid actually started crying. And the teacher explained to me that this kid just lost his parents. Now, I feel terrible. I have to get a good smile from this kid. But I mentioned before, I lost family when I was young, so I know what this kid's going through. I called the kid over, kid, listen. I know what you're going through, believe me, I've been there, and it's gonna be okay. And if you ever need someone to trade with, <laughs> let me know. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been awesome. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Steve Aprilo. <laughs> you may have heard uh, sometimes comedians have to supplement their income by doing other work during the day. Um, Steven babysits. <laughs> Pretty fucking scary. I think. So, um, in, in soliciting people to come out tonight and enjoy the show, a lot of people that I talk to, I notice this more and more, are, are married with kids, and um, there's this void that you kind of approach when you ask people to make an appointment when they have kids. I was like, so I'm doing a comedy uh, Wednesday night, it's gonna be, do you think you can come? 
I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's going to be four Wednesdays if you want anybody. I, I don't know. <laughs> are, do you, are you kids in sports? That it, I, I don't know. <laughs> she tells me where to go. I pick. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so you guys came, so you knew, right? Right? You guys having fun? Yeah. Right, for next week. All right, next to me and I'm bringing to the stage a very, very good friend of mine. We do comedy a lot together. We actually do comedy in rehabs and detoxes in our company called Recover the Laughter. Um, she also plays clubs and colleges all over the country. She won the Ladies of Laughter contest. She is open for Gilbert Gottfried um, before he fucked up that whole Affleck duck thing he had going for him. Show a lot of love, Cara More. <laughs> can sound like 16. Yes! I love it. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Yes. Thank you. Oh my god. This is the this is really the latest I've been out on a Wednesday in ages. <laughs> this is a great great show. Thank you. So um as Rob said, we do a lot of recovery shows. You know, I haven't had a drink in real, a really, really long time. But I still do crack, so <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm able to be up tonight. <laughs> but um, I'm actually, I am actually in a better mood than I was. I've been in a really, really shitty mood lately because my boyfriend just broke up with me. Can you believe that fucking shit? I know, I know. I haven't been able to eat. I can't sleep. I'm dragging my ass around the house. My husband really wants to know what's wrong. <laughs> You're not impressed by that. You seem really... Uh, <laughs> I don't think he should be that upset if he finds out I have a boyfriend. I mean, he was the one who suggested date night. <laughs> you should stop with the suggestions. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriends are like, oh my God, Carrie, you're never gonna get caught cheating. Because in addition to being a stand-up comic, I'm also a private investigator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People always ask me if I'm a decoy for cheating husbands. I'm like, no, getting a guy to cheat is easy. That's like hunting in a zoo. I, I wanna get a guy to do something hard, like clean my toilet, <laughs> or take me shoe shopping, right? Because guys never like to shop. Do you like to shop? Sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah? For somebody other than yourself? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah? Oh, all right. Well, you can take me shopping, maybe uh, sit in that little chair, hold my pocketbook? Well, I don't know. We'll see. No? Right? Well, if I gave you that little chair and I gave you a lap dance, then you'd take me fucking yeah, shopping. Yeah, absolutely. Right, exactly. Because as long as there's a tit in your face, you guys will do anything. Absolutely. Now it sounds like a nice day of shopping, huh? <laughs> As long as there's a tit in your face, you guys will do anything, right? Oh, hi, Kara. There's tits in my face. Ooh. Oh, my God. So uh, I'm on uh, this new migraine medication, you know, and uh, they didn't tell me that it would have really weird side effects. Anybody ever take what migraine medication? Yeah. Okay, well, it's got what weird side effects. One, it's making me really depressed, but it's also making me really horny. Those are weird side effects, right? So now I'm too sad and tired to screw. The other night, my husband and I were in bed, and I'm like, <laughs> he's like, am I hurting you? I'm like, are you in? <laughs> I don't know about you other married people, but I look at my matrimonial obligations like paying the mortgage once a month, simply because I have to. <laughs> The only problem is if I don't pay up by like halfway through the month, he wants to instill like late fees, like foreplay. I'm like, oh yeah, no foreplay, right? Yeah, I'm like, can't you just point me towards the TV and fuck me from behind? Then we both get laid, right? It's a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah, uh, I get to watch TV, he gets laid. Um, I got the home shopping network up. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, look, they got the new jewelry collection up. Oh, I'm gonna get a new necklace. I'm like, listen, you don't fucking check out until I do. <laughs> oh my God, my, yeah, I get really depressed, so yeah. Oh my God, my girlfriend's like, wow, you really seem depressed, you know? You really need to find your happy place. Like, I know where my happy place is, right? It's in a box under my bed. <laughs> my husband found it and he's like, oh my God, Kara, it looks like you don't even need me anymore. 
like, I need you, sweetie. I need you to go to the store and get me batteries. It's gotten so bad, I started to take the batteries out of my kids' toys. My son's like, my lightsaber doesn't work anymore. I'm like, that's too bad, because mommy's works just fine. May the force be with you. Sometimes I just take his vibrating toys and ride them around. We'll use his Tickle Me Elmo. I'm like, Tickle Me Elmo. My husband's like, why do you keep calling me Elmo? I'm like, I wish you'd fucking tickle me. Oh. Yeah, I quit, I quit drugs, I quit alcohol, I quit smoking. Anybody ever quit smoking? You use the nic anybody use the nicotine patch? Oh my god, you just the did you get any of the side effects? Yes, the crazy dreams. Fucking crazy dreams. My, <laughs> mine were all dirty. I was having sex with everybody. My dreams, old, old boyfriends, my best friend, Mrs. McAllister, my son's lunch lady. I'm like, holy shit, Mrs. McAllister, I love that hand net. <laughs> and those tater tots. <laughs> They're making my nipples hard. <laughs> making me squishy in my girly parts. They should call that thing the snatch patch. <laughs> oh yeah, I love my patches. Yeah, I'm putting extra patches on just to get just to get wet for the home shopping network. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh what else? So my name's Cara Amore, kind of an exotic yeah. name, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. People always ask me if it's my porno name. I'm like, no. I'm like, my porno name is Agnes Moorhead. <laughs> so if you're looking for any of my work, that's what you should Google. I actually made a porno once with my husband, and it was really hot till I watched it. I popped the DVD in, and I see my own ass on a 62-inch widescreen TV in high def. <laughs> yeah, nobody should see their body parts that clearly. <laughs> at one part, I didn't even know what I was looking at anymore. I'm like, what the fuck is this? SeaWorld? Because <laughs> it made everything look bigger. I didn't like that. My husband, on the other hand, loved it. He's calling the neighbors over. He's like, check out my shit on this screen. <laughs> Look how much bigger it is. I'm like, that's your fucking toe, asshole. I'm like, that little speck over there, honey, that's your penis. Because <laughs> guys love their own shit, right? Yeah, you guys love it. You're like, you're like prance around the room asking us to look at it. You're like, look what you did to it. Look how big you made it. We would never do that, right, ladies? We never ask them to look at it. We're always like, don't look at it. We're like, figure out a way to eat it, but don't fucking look at it. That's why God tucked it all nice up there like a fortune cookie, right? That shit is for eating. Looking? Asking you to look at that stuff. <laughs> oh, I was a fat kid growing up. Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, nice fucking supportive group. You fuckers <laughs> are. <laughs> oh. Then I married a guy who could eat whatever he wants, never gains a pound. He would eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every night in bed, and I'd wake up a pound heavier. <laughs> I'm like, why can't you eat something that's going to help me lose weight? like broccoli or carrots or me. <laughs> Imagine that, ladies. Imagine if every time they went down on us, we lost weight. I'd be like, listen, I got a fucking wedding this weekend and my dress doesn't fit. Get on your fucking knees. <laughs> Imagine if it worked the other way, though. Imagine if every time he blew you, I lost weight. I'd be a fucking hoover. <laughs> <laughs> then that shit would finally make sense, huh? Doesn't work that way. So my husband is always suggesting ways that I can lose weight that are gonna benefit us both. So he buys me those cardio striptease tapes and a pole. Do you know how much upper body strength it takes to get my fat ass up on a fucking pole? <laughs> yeah, you know, right, don't you? <laughs> Have you tried it? I, I, would do, I would do it, I would strip for cash. I'm thinking, how do those girls get good at that? They have like open strip night? 
<laughs> My luck, I'd get there and I'd get the one heckler. And he'd be like, you fucking suck. <laughs> oh, man. So what else? So let the blonde hair fool you. I'm actually Italian. I mean, I'm really Italian. I grew up with an extra kitchen in my basement. I think my mother put it there so she never have to feed her in-laws above ground. Because <laughs> I grew up with a mean Italian grandmother who used to make backhanded compliments like, gotta, you look good fat. <laughs> but there's a skinny girl inside you screaming to get out. I'm like, I know, Grandma, but I can usually quiet that bitch with some cookies. <laughs> and after I had my son, I went to see my grandmother in the nursing home, and she's like, oh, my God, Gata, you really do look good fat. I'm like, Grandma, I'm not fat. I just had a baby. She's like, oh, Gata, nobody carries a baby in their ass. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, having a mustache and a beard will make an old lady mean. <laughs> oh, she was a nasty old lady. Because I'm Italian, though, people would always ask me if my father was in the mob. I'm like, I wish my father was in the mob. He was a New York City Housing Authority cop. He used to steal shit from the projects. Ladders, toilets, refrigerators, government cheese. <laughs> I wanted to be growing up gaudy. We were growing up ghetto. <laughs> He used to always tell everybody he's in the anti-crime division. I'm like, Daddy, isn't the whole force anti-crime? <laughs> what do they have, half the force committing the crimes while the other half is solving them? And his biggest joy in life was to get a racehorse. And he just got one. And the thing is fucking retarded. <laughs> Can't get out of the gate. I'm like, oh, great, Daddy. Your jockey doesn't wear a helmet, but your horse does. <laughs> Oh, as I, as I said, I was a fat kid, you know, and uh, my weight goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. I just lost a bunch of weight, you know, and uh, people are coming up to me and they're like, oh my God, you lost a ton. I'm like, do you know what your fucking ton is? It's a Toyota 4x4. Four four. How fucking fat was I? <laughs> my cousin actually asked me if I had gastric bypass, yeah. I'm like, no. It's kind of rude. I did it the old-fashioned way. I threw up. <laughs> I'm actually not used to women saying stuff to my face, right, ladies? No, I'm going to say it behind your back. But a guy, no problem. A guy will walk right into a room and be like, hey, how you doing, you bald, ugly prick? So that's apparently how you guys say I love you to each other. You would never hear a woman say to another woman, how you doing, you cellulite laden whore? Because <laughs> we're mean, but never to your face, right? But you may hear as you're walking away, did you see how tight her pants were? When she walks, those pinstripes look like an EKG. <laughs> All right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting Strong Island. Keep it going for Kara Moray. Keep it going for her. Dainty little thing that she is. So now that I'm losing all this weight, it's uh, interesting how people, they get so like, obviously emotionally dramatic when they're, holy shit, holy, look at, look at you, holy shit, you look great, you lost so much weight, um, you're disappearing on us. <laughs> I see a lot less of you lately, all this kind of shit. But when you get fat, nobody's ever like, what the fuck, Rob? Tits are bigger than my wives. What the fuck are you doing? What are you eating out half a fucking uh, Taco Bell? How's it going, man? Want to have a seat? Sure. There you go. Right in the back there. Grab a slice of pizza. I paid for it, so fucking eat it, please. I've been bitching about it all night. <laughs> and I went with the bariatric surgery because I did a lot of research on it. If you're going to do something like that, look into it. It's very serious. It's life-changing. It's, it's surgery. And I did. I looked into it, and... Um, Insurance wouldn't cover me going back on cocaine, so I'm going to bury it. That would be an interesting diet. How you doing, Rob? 70 pounds. <laughs> Fucking great. I haven't had a hard on in seven months, but 70 pounds. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys ready for some more? <laughs> going to bring in you my third and final special guest performer for tonight. He plays clubs and colleges all over the country. He plays Atlantic City regularly. You may know him as Danny the Democrat. Make some noise for Terry McNeely! Yes. What's 
What's up? I am not sober. <laughs> the rest of this show. What's going on, Strong Island? How we doing? Anybody in here? Anybody in here in your 40s and thought you were in your 20s, you'd be successful in your 40s, become a UPS driver at a Farmingville, get high on cocaine and drunk, smash through the back of six cars, get fired, become a comedian, get booked here tonight? Nobody else, just me? <laughs> Wish I wrote that joke, but God wrote it and he played it on me. True story. Right through the windshield, left with a pension, that's what Brown could do for me. Yes. I didn't get any pizza. This is in the corner over there. Out to behind Dan, you hiding the pizza on me? I had lunch on the way over here. I may, uh, went to a place in a shithole in Sayville. Made a poor choice on the menu. Wound up sitting in the bathroom stall. People came in the bathroom after me. There was conversations going on. These conversations had topics, substance, intelligence, and I realized I was taking a shit in the ladies' room. <laughs> it's nothing smart going in the men's room, guys. You know, I know I'm 46 years old and I have friends that watch wrestling and think it's real. You know what I'm gonna do, brother? You're gonna do what the director told you to do. This isn't a real sport, it's a horrible television show with a guy with glitter and sequins and a mullet for some reason. If you guys love wrestling, I'm sorry that you're a loser that lives in your mother's basement in Yapank, Long Island. I used to love wrestling, and then I graduated fifth grade and discovered pussy and beer, and I stopped watching wrestling because I'm a big boy now. Anybody in here in your mid-40s, you play video games, step out into Broadway and throw yourself in front of a moving garbage truck and kill yourself. That's why she stopped blowing you, okay? Not because she got married, waka waka. I have a problem with everything guys my age do. I, I don't, I'm in Generation X, I guess. Don't get it, nothing. You could still, you could dress like a normal person and go to a bar. You don't have to dress like you're on the Mets when you're watching the Mets. You don't have to wear the full uniform and the blue wristbands and then high five your bro and go, we're winning. No, we're not winning. The 27 year old millionaire on second base is winning and you're a chubby plumber from Wantua. You're not on the team, you didn't make the team in high school either, that's why your father hates you and thinks you're gay. <laughs> Stop living vicariously through sports idols because you sat in the Levittown High School and read the Dewey Decimal System with a yarmulke on your head because you're unathletic. I want to thank you guys all for coming here tonight. What would you be doing if you weren't here watching Netflix like the rest of the uh, fat people on Long Island with cheese doodle dust on your fat upper lip? I don't, these people cannot get away from the television show. They, 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 they uh, you don't watch Walking Dead? Uh, shut up. These b TV bullies, like, they get mad if you don't watch Sons of Anarchy and, shut up. Games of Thrones. Yeah, yo, Game of Thrones, that's another, I'm like, no, I'm not watching Game of Thrones, it's midgets and magic, I don't give a shit about that. It doesn't, it's fantasy, it doesn't exist. MTV, we all grew up with, right there, and we grew up with MTV, they haven't had a music video on there in 14 years, it's chubby pregnant teenagers from Alabama, I don't watch that nonsense, catfish, yeah, sure. Reality, it's nothing but reality on there, and there's no reality in reality, none. Porn stars, really? You know how popular the show is? You know the ratings are through the roof? You take your garbage to four fat guys in Las Vegas. <laughs> And the, and, the guy, and the guy in the parking lot has such conviction, he's so confident, he's like, I'm gonna go in here, I'm bringing this thing in here, and I want 600,000 fucking dollars for this thing. Penny less I walk, I don't need him, I'm out of here. He walks in there, meets Bald Rick, what do you got? I got the Liberty Bell, the real Liberty Bell. I stole it from Philadelphia and brought it here, and Rick is such a ripoff, he'll go, eh, it's got a crack in it, it's been around a while, it's gonna take up some room in my shop, I'll give you 600 bucks for it, and he's like, Okay, write him up, chum. He was over there. You got Hoarders, another great classic uh, reality show. I passed uh, season 9, 10, and 11 coming in here because I drove past Amityville. If they need the next three seasons, I'll, 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 I'll give them directions to uh, the next three seasons right off 110 over there behind the Jamaican jerk store. Hoarders is ridiculous. What do you do when you watch Hoarders? You just vacuum the same spot over and over again. Like, I don't want to be like that filthy bitch in Indiana. Because people don't realize you could throw garbage in the garbage can. And then you walk it to the curb and these trucks that your tax dollars pay for, they take this shit away from your house. You don't have to put your dead raccoon in a freezer. You don't have to put your garbage in the bathtub and then shower in the kitchen sink. There's, it's a mental disorder. They don't get it. And I have a great, I have the perfect idea to solve the hoarder's problems, but A&E won't take my phone calls. 
I want to go into the hoarders' houses, throw cocaine everywhere in the house. When they become addicted to the cocaine, they'll sell everything in the fucking house, support their habit. House clean, then we put them on intervention, A and E, same network. I'm a genius. You're staring at me, but you come up with some you come up with some pretty good ideas when you're in a in a red roof hotel in Detroit at three o'clock in the morning, masturbating because you had a bad set. Where are my Italians at in here? It's Nassau County. They gotta be everywhere, right? Italians. I don't get you. I don't understand you. I'm Irish. I don't hate you. I just don't understand you. You're witchy and superstitious and you lie to your relatives about dumb shit that doesn't exist. They have like this whole dinner. Dinner. First of all, get a, get a, get a dictionary, okay? It's because it's not, let me be Pacific. Pacific? You're going to be an ocean or a coastline? I think it's specific. Don't go outside again. It's a little chilly. You're going to catch ammonia. I know there's a silent P in it, but you're not going to catch a clear cleaning product on a chilly evening on Long Island. You don't got to pay back a credit card loan. It's an insecure loan. No, it's an unsecured loan. It's not an insecure loan. It's not a loan that's a little shy and can't pick up girls at a bar. I don't get it. They have this dinner, they have this dinner etiquette bullshit. You, you guys get together like every 48 hours and have dinner. That's why your sons move three houses down the block and they can't be that far. No, we grew up in Ozone Park. I moved all the way to Howard Beach. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a $3 Uber. You're an asshole. And they have this, this, they have this, this nonsense where you can't put the, the pocketbook under the dinner table or you'll never be prosperous. That doesn't mean anything. It's, it's lies. It's witchy, superstitious bullshit. The patriarch of the family, the guy with the big head of white hair and the pinky ring, he cannot sing at the dinner table or his wife will be unfaithful. God forbid Uncle Al's happy for like five fucking seconds, right? God forbid. He does concrete in Brooklyn and he goes back to Hop Hog. God forbid you let him sing. This is my favorite thing and everybody on Long Island knows this. You're sitting next to an Italian in the car, you drive by a church, do you think he's watching you? Do you, Anthony? You're in your Lincoln Navigator on Merrick Road. You think Jesus is watching you? He's got time for your nonsense? He's busy. I'm sitting next to my best friend, Dave DeVito. We pass a church. He goes like that. I'm like, we're going to pick up cocaine. Are you serious right now? Somehow you intertwine Jesus and blow in a desperate attempt to get up to heaven? Who smokes cigarettes in here? Obviously, I walk back 43 times. So you know I do. Who's a real American? Uh, afraid of cancer? You're afraid of cancer? You're gonna get dying. No, you're not. Jesus is gonna take you when He wants to take you. Stop. Light up. Have fun. Enjoy your Asiago bread, tuna wrap, gluten-free, pansy bullshit. And I chain smoke, and we'll get hit by the same taxi cab out here. Who had fun? Ooh. Terry McNeely had fun. God damn it. Yes, that's why I just needed to wet my palate anyway. There was frost on the cup. I knew that was going to happen. I swear to God. God punish you. Yeah, for fucking with the Italians. <laughs> yes, Santangelo, you. You. Oh, thank you very much. Where are my married people at in here? How, why are you people out on a Wednesday night at 10 o'clock if you're married? Weird. Weird. Married guys in Long Island, you have a lot to look forward to. Almost being right. You're pretty close. She wants you to be right one day. She's in a good mood. Almost getting a blowjob four years after the wedding. That's a distant memory. That's why she smiled on the altar. Last BJ ever. Unless it's your birthday. I don't know if you know this. Cuomo's right in the center of the law, Dan. Your birthday is blowjob day. So don't do anything stupid, hockeys, jerseys, and wrestling and shit like that. Don't do that. Another 365 days before you see that glorious sight of an open mouth without babbling shit coming out of it. So what you want to do is go to work, shut the phone off. They're all jokes. Calm down. If you're offended, I'm sorry, mommy and daddy raised the pussy. They're just jokes. It's when everybody's assholes tighten up. I'm happily married. No, you're not. You're really not. So what you do is you shut the phone off, no fights, ironclad, right there, boom. Don't like a Facebook post, and look, you know, she'll, you know, she, happy birthday, Troy. She, she thinks you're miserable anyway. She married you for the house, okay? You gotta play dumb. You gotta make believe. You don't know it's your birthday. Then you go to the florist, get a dozen roses on the way home, bam, slap it down the island in your kitchen. She'll be bewildered. What is this for? It's your birthday. Oh, it is? Zip, blowjob day. 
<laughs> Great. I'll leave some business cards over here next to the patchouli and, uh, and the pot and the pot things. And uh, you guys grab them on Facebook. You fellas friend me on Facebook. And on your birthday, say, Terry, thanks for the blowjob. But, uh, you know, inbox me. Don't put it on my wall like some guy did in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And I'm friends with my aunt on Facebook. My mother calls me up. Are you sucking dicks on a Pennsylvania turnpike? I'm like, okay. What are you going to do? Right? They pay us in Funyuns and Mountain Dew. It'll we'll pass well. Yes. Who has kids in here who doesn't realize that pulling out leads to naps and fishing? Yep, it does. I'll never bring a kid into this world. And there's only, really only for one reason. Because we don't keep track of scores to Little League games anymore. Everyone's a winner. This is a nice world we live in now. Reality is waved bye-bye to this, this island, this tri-state area a long time ago with this, this sensitive feelings, pussy bullshit, I'm a little depressed, take a pill or better. It's so delusional from what, what, what we grew up with. It's ridiculous. I don't keep track of scores. You don't have to do anything good, Dan. You don't have to do anything good, right? You just show up. It's not, it's not for merit now. It's an attendance trophy. If mom's minivan doesn't break down the way to the field, you get a trophy. <laughs> You don't have to do anything good. You don't have to steal a base and hit two triples like I did on May 6th, 1981. No, you just show up and you get a trophy. And all this horse shit started in Texas, 2008. A high school basketball coach, her team beat the other team 100 to zero. They launched this major investigation. We're at the bottom of this. She hurt lots of kids' feelings. We're at the bottom of this. You don't have to get to the bottom of it. It's a basketball team. One team was really good and the other team was fucking white. That's what happened. <laughs> Okay? Sometimes reality creeps in and, and it's called the stereotype and people go, that's racist. No, it's not. It's stereotype. Nobody ever said, look at the Chinese guy over there with the giant cock. <laughs> stereotypes. Calm down. I don't understand people that delete their Facebook friends and they're like, oh, I can't believe you said that. You said something about spaghetti sauce and Italians. <laughs> oh, yeah. 85%, it's based on 85% truth, that's why. That's why. <laughs> Anybody here miss real bus stops, like when we were kids, where the bus would drop you off, and you'd walk home unattended 13 blocks, because nobody <laughs> wants to fucking kidnap you, because you're noisy and expensive, and nobody cares about you, because we're not living in an after-school special? <laughs> I cannot go anywhere in my neighborhood between 315 and 445, because every four-way stop sign, there's 63 SUVs right here and 119 SUVs on this block with moms sitting in there tweeting. Is that the sixth grade bus? No, it's the ninth grade bus. Is that the sixth grade bus? No, it's the twelfth grade bus. <laughs> and the bus pulls open and the golden drawbridge with the flotation device from a fucking plane crash falls right out, right into the back seat of the Toyota Sequoia and mom drives him two driveways away. You can see the bus stop from your living room, okay? You never even have to abandon Luke and Laura on Channel 7, okay? You can watch them, those assholes, and watch your kid, your special little miracle, get off the bus and walk down here. You don't have to go up there, run the, run the engine, fuck up the ozone layer. And for some reason now, there's like this dad, this pussy whip dad out there with the Forrest Gump stands. I'm gonna go get Morgan and Tyler off the bus. Get a job, Brian. What are you, a dad getting the kids off the bus? I could call my father on his phone right now. I'd be like, you know where one single one of my bus stops were from 1976 to 1984? My dad would be like, no, I had three jobs. I was a real man. <laughs> three jobs, yeah. I was born in 1972. I didn't meet my father until 1998. He wasn't sitting in my bus stop to make me a little pampered child. Let's go home so mom can yell at us. I'm assuming a lot of you guys are children of the 70s and the teenagers of the 80s like me and watching all of our entire childhood get sucked away and everything's becoming illegal and dangerous and banned. Pixie sticks. Everybody remember pixie sticks? You know, the legislators are attacking that now and they're trying to make it illegal. Pixie sticks are a business mogul who came across 972,000 pounds of sugar. He put them in straws and kids ate them and sucked them and snorted them and you just caught your son Billy running along a side Buick doing 97 miles an hour. We gotta get rid of that now because that leads to obesity and diabetes. So that's mean, that's out. Dodgeball, the greatest game ever in gym class. Throw a hard rubber ball at your best friend's face, breaks his nose, blood shoots across the room on a Tuesday morning in gym class and everybody has a good time. But no, we can't do that. It's a barbaric activity and your sons grow up to be little barbarians and vote for a real estate mogul with a horrible comb over. So we can't do that anymore. He's a Nazi, I have proof. 
Pretty soon it's becoming so weak and pussified, we're gonna line up kids on the opposite side of the gym and they're gonna toss compliments at each other. <laughs> I really like your Carnegie, Brianna. I like your Crocs, Tyler and Taylor and Jackson and Carter and Fielder and Meadow and Storm and Cooper and Dawson and Jackson and the rest of these last names and dog names that you fucking white people name your, say your kids as first names. We're all sick of it. You're bugging the world. Stop doing this. Please stop doing this. You're not different, okay? Kathy Unique from South to Talk. And it's so unique. What happened to Joseph and Michelle, huh? What, what happened? Oh, you can't do that. It was my grandfather's name. And you catch your son jerking off his friend Todd behind the shed. Because you named him Hunter, you made him gay. He could have been a Jimmy and everything would be fine. It's your fault. Sorry. White people, stop naming your sons Brock and Connor. Those are rapist names, okay? Yeah, those white eyelash ginger freckled freak shows with their socks up to their knees and their flip flops. They rape every girl on campus. That's why they have the call box on campus. Brock's coming. Is he raping you? No, but he's going to. He wakes up and he rapes. That's what jock gingers do. I hate white jocks. Disgusting. I'm not making fun of rape. I'm making fun of Brock. White jocks. I'm entitled. My daddy makes seven figures and I'm from Roslyn and I'll put my dick anywhere I want to. Hashtag me too. All right. Okay, apparently Strong Island's not ready for that one. I won't even continue the rest of that. Anybody here buy their kids an iPhone? <laughs> and they're under the age of 10 so I can come out there and punch you in the face? Because you're the problem, okay? Your kids don't need a phone. They don't need a phone. You know what phone I had when I was little? The Fisher Price phone that rolls on the floor with the eyeballs that went like that? Yeah. I didn't have a phone you could launch a missile to Afghanistan, do your taxes, and order Billy Joel tickets at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? They don't need a phone. Stop tracking them. Let, them. let them wander off and drink beers in the dead end. Let them get molested with the guy with the three-foot beard like my parents let happen to me. It builds character. These people it's always want to track. I, I gotta know where they are at all times. Why, why does this generation, why do you guys love your kids? Our parents hated us. Why do you love your kids? My dad sent me to Mather with stitches like three times. I don't get it. Anybody here have a child with a fake disease? You know what I mean? Not a real disease, sir. That's sad. LCD, ADD, ADHD. 1978, your kid was an asshole, didn't know how to pay attention. Want to cure ADD? Take this empty chair home tonight. Smash your son, Sebastian, on the back of the medulla oblongata. Another patient cured by Dr. Terry McNeely. What happens is... It's like an excuse to be an asshole. Like you go over to your friend's house, right, and their kid's being a dick, and you're like, hey, what's wrong with Avery? He's got ADD. Okay, that's it. Call it off. She threw a couple initials at me. It's all good. Yeah, she just made up a couple initials and threw them at me. So he's allowed to be a dick and throw my sneakers in the pool now. He's allowed to do whatever he wants because he has ADD. Then the kids grow up, and now they're under this false pretense that they have ADD. Then they hit 19 years old, and they go, Mom, Dad, <laughs> I got depression. Depression? Wow. Cheer up, it's cheaper. I've had depression since the day I turned 17. It's called fucking bills, okay? You know who I am? I'm at work today. Yeah, I'm working right now, telling dick jokes with lights in my eyes in a, in a TV studio. I'm not sitting under a tree writing a poem listening to Alanis Morissette. I'm not sitting in a dark bedroom cranking nine inch nails, cutting pieces of skin off my wrist like a failure. No, I'm at work. I hope you don't have rent or mortgage and claim to have depression. What are you gonna tell your landlord? Frank, I don't have the rent. I was sad on Tuesday. <laughs> Cheer up and be a real person. How about that? <laughs> so this commercial, <laughs> you know, I grew up when you grew up. So, you know, tell me how, tell me where this commercial went off the rails where Hollywood intercepted this thing. Kid totals a Subaru. Busy intersection. Car's fucked. He's unscathed. He calls up his dad. Dad, the Subaru's total. And the, kid, the father goes, are you okay? The father. That's a mom answer. What does dad care about? Money. My dad be like, what the fuck did you do to the goddamn Subaru? I'm gonna fucking kill you, you're gonna be on the cover of Daily News. 
No doubt I'm okay. You're not going to be okay when I get there and I put my slippers on and come up there in the Buick. Are you okay? Wow. You wonder why everybody's so coddled and weak. Are you okay? Wow. Anybody hear of a gender reveal party when they have their baby so I could crawl out on the tables and kick you in the esophagus? Because you make me sick to my stomach because it's all about you instead of your baby. This is the problem, man. It used to be about the babies, about the kids. And we used to have something in the 60s, 70s, and 80s called patience and maturity. And then Rachel Ray had to go fuck everything up. And go, we could find out ahead of time what the sex of the baby is. And the mom can make it all about her because she just wants to be showered with constant attention. One more time. People wonder why the kids are growing up. Why, why is Carter growing up so fast? Because you have a Toyota Corolla in the driveway with no plates and he's 11, okay? That's why. Why is he talking to a naked 68-year-old Swedish man at three o'clock in the morning? Because you bought him a Kindle. You put him on the interwebs. That's why it's your fault. Let your kid be a kid. Let him go and burn ants in the G and, and burn G.I. Joe's in the, in the sandbox with a magnifying glass. Let them be kids. Stop giving us all this technology. It's like the douchebags that take their kids to Disney World when they're like three weeks old. And they're like, Taylor, look at the castle, Taylor. Look at the castle. And Taylor's just like. <laughs> Taylor's not a real person. It's a ball of meat that eats and shits and cries. And you just spent $4,000 to go to Orlando to shake hands with a giant mouse because your wife fucking told you you had to. You don't know what a gender reveal party is. You go get a secret sonogram at the doctor or hospital and you send the results of the baby because you're so immature you have to know ahead of time so you can go home and pre-paint the room pink because you think that your baby is a three-day-year-old is going to remember that day you presented him in there. I was born in 72. I don't have a single memory till 82. Lock your kids in a closet and throw them bread and water, okay? Mom of the year. You know, I invent the thing pink. <laughs> You go, so basically, they send the results of the sex of your baby to the bakery. The bakery guy with the Mario mustache knows what your baby is before you do. That's fucked up right there. Then you gather all your dummy friends around the island in your kitchen you went to Nassau Community College with. Cut the cake, Ashley. I can't wait to see you're going to have them. I'm going to Instagram it, tweet it, don't poke me. And they cut the cake open, and if there's blue icing in the center, you're going to have a boy. Yay, everybody goes home sober and disappointed because you served Lorna Dunes and Fruit Punch because you didn't want whiskey next to your precious baby bump. Pink icing, girl. That was the bakery guy. I put chocolate icing in the center of that fucking cake. Congratulations to the black guy next door's kid who's got a much bigger dick than your suburban schmucky husband named Joshua from Plainview with his really cool Argyle socks and his gay Volvo. I'm going to leave you guys on this. Where are my dog lovers at? Go ahead, reach for some sky. Dogs, the best thing ever, ever invented. Okay? Dogs. What we don't need on Long Island is doggy daycare, okay? Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Nobody cares. It's a dog. Your dog doesn't care. You leave for work, it curls up like a cobra, and it goes to sleep. It doesn't give a shit about you till you come home with a milk bone, okay? It's a dog. This has been going on since the beginning of people, time, and dogs. You don't need a doggy whisperer, a doggy psychologist, and a dog. In fact, if you're a true dog lover, you want your dog to be bored and miserable out of their fucking minds because you come home from work, 8, 10, 12 hours, Nails in a hardwood, nails in a belly. They, right from where this lady is to me, they lunge in the air and they jump at you. They love you. They miss you. They're beautiful creatures with giant hearts. If I wanted to buy an emotionless shit animal, I'd buy a cat. Cats are like strippers. They're dead inside. There's an empty space where their heart's supposed to be, but it's not there. And this is when some lady named Joanne in the corner goes, my fucking cat loves me. Your cat hates your guts. Cats hate human beings. They're snakes with hair and feet. They're evil and slithery and slimy. That's why they suck the breath out of your babies while they're sleeping. That's why when they scratch you, they leave the venom of Satan in your arm and it itches unexplainably for four weeks. Cats are evil. They're ugh, disgusting, slimy, premeditating. They have an agenda. Cats are the fucking Hillary Clinton of pets. Guys, that's my time. Thank you very much. Sitting through this horse shit.
You can break a smile now. I'm leaving. You were wow. Keep it going with Terry. Terry McNeely. Steven Rocco Perillo. Keep it going with Steven. Cara More. Let's get Cara More out here. Keep it going with Cara. I'm Robert Sivadanis. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. Make sure to tell everybody what a good time you had. Everybody watching out there, like us, like us, like us, share us, tell your friends. Good night.